We'd all like to think we would help out a friend in need, but what if that friend had literally become a human bomb? That's the question at the heart of the amazing survival story you're about to hear. Chris, the young man had been wounded in such a bizarre way that he could potentially kill anybody nearby. So, do they break all the rules and regulations, risk their careers and their lives to save his? As we start this Memorial Day weekend, it's another look at what heroism is all about. A sunny spring day in eastern Afghanistan. The soldiers of Alpha Company head out on patrol. Private Channing Moss is on board, manning a gun in a Humvee. How prepared, how poised did you have to be? <laughs> Very poised. You're scared. You have to learn the terrain, you have to learn every bump, every rock. This is Taliban and Al-Qaeda country. There's uh, danger zones all over the place. Sergeant Eric Wynn is in Moss's Humvee. And in a stroke of luck that will soon become apparent, so is Jared Angel, the only medic on the patrol. The men call him Doc. Lieutenant Billy Mariani is in command. He remembers, for some reason, he had a bad feeling about that patrol. There was definitely a sense of uneasiness. A sense of apprehension, you're waiting for something. The convoy enters a narrow stream bed surrounded by higher ground. Uh, I saw a puff of smoke. And then you just hear a pop. I was like, we're in contact. Oh man, we're under attack. We just got ambushed. Bullets turn to rocket propelled grenades. Rockets the size of baseball bats with high explosives on one end and tail fins on the other, traveling as fast as a bullet. That is what is now raining down on Alpha Company. And I saw the first rocket hit, the, hit a truck in front of me. What did it look like? A trail of smoke and fire, and you could hear it just barreling through the air. Then you heard the boom. The convoy is in trouble. A pickup truck is burning. Two Afghan soldiers are dead. Two others are seriously wounded. Escape is critical. I'm like, get out of the kill zone. Right when I said, get out, is when we got hit. Well, I didn't even finish my sentence. Three rocket-propelled grenades hit the Humvee. It felt like one huge blow. One punches through the windshield. I thought I got slammed up against the truck. And I went to go return fire again. And then I smelled some smoking, and I looked down, and I was smoking. You were smoking? Yes, ma'am. I look at him to tell him to turn the gun toward where we're getting shot at. And that's when I noticed. I see the fence sticking out of his side. I look down and the RPG was sticking out of him. It was still smoking. So you look down, you see the fins of an RPG sticking out of you? Yes, ma'am. The first transmission was from uh, Sergeant Wynn, who was in Moss's truck. And he said, I have two casualties. One's myself, I have sharp wounds to my face. And the other one's Moss, he has a tail fin sticking out of his side. I could hear Moss raising hell in the background over the radio. I was scared, so I was screaming. Even a battle-hardened soldier would have been shaken at the sight of Moss, impaled with a three-foot rocket designed to explode on impact, killing anyone within 30 feet. Doc Angel is less than a foot away and is the first person that day to make a decision that would save Moss's life. He stays there. I looked at him straight in his eyes like, Doc, I don't want to die like this. I'm going to do everything I can. I said, you keep fighting with me, I'll keep fighting with you. As Doc Angel bandaged Moss, Sergeant Wynn also remained within reach. If the rocket were to explode, all three men would die instantly. He was holding my hand and on the radio at the same time. He was squeezing my hand, making sure I was staying alive. I squeeze it and make sure he squeezed back. You know, he's still there. Calls for help have reached the chopper pilots at a nearby medevac base, minus one key piece of information. We didn't tell them that, you know, Moss had live ordnance in them because there was the possibility that, you know, they may not want to transport them with live ordnance in them. 
A Black Hawk chopper is ready to go rescue Private Moss, but with bullets flying, the battlefield is still too dangerous. Commanders delay the flight. Back on the ground, Lieutenant Mariani checks on Moss. I, I grabbed his hand and I just said, hey buddy, we're gonna get you out of here. Moss, you're going home, don't worry. He said that, I can remember him saying that 10 times when I was laying on the ground. But impaled and in shock, his hip broken, his insides torn apart, Private Moss is very much in danger and dangerous to everyone around him. Still, Doc Angel continues working frantically to stabilize Moss. I constantly was looking at my watch saying, you know, when's the bird going to get here? When's the bird going to get here? I asked him, I was like, Doc, what do you think? And he just kind of shook his head. Private Moss is close to death. He begins thinking of his wife Lorena, six months pregnant back home in Georgia, their daughter Juliana, and the baby on the way. Private Moss begins to pray. That's when I started thinking about him. I mean, I'm not going to see Lorena, I'm not going to see my baby born, I'm not going to see Juliana. And I was just like, God, take, you know, take care of him, please. I can't imagine what goes through a man's head at that moment when you think you're going to die. I can remember looking up at the sun, and I can remember feeling a cool breeze on my face. I was just like, man, this might be the last breeze I ever feel. I was just like, is the bird coming? So I thought I was going to tap out. Then Moss hears the sound of help from above. The rescue chopper has finally arrived. For the first time, the crew sees Moss and those rocket fins. They realize instantly saving his life will require risking their own. In his abdomen, in this area right here, was the, the shaft of the rocket, and the fins were sticking out over here. Army policy states they are not supposed to transport him. Moss was a human bomb. The risk was too great. He could blow the $15 million helicopter out of the sky and kill seven other soldiers on board. But if they left him, he would most certainly die. And I asked my crew, like, are you guys comfortable with this? Because I wasn't going to put my, my crew in jeopardy if they wasn't comfortable with this. They all knew the risks but they also knew they were taking Moss very gently, RPG and all. He's possibly bleeding to death internally. He's in shock. We had to get out of that situation and get to a hospital where they could do surgery on him. And we're not gonna leave a US soldier to die in the middle of Afghanistan.